Dear students, welcome to the very last class before Eid. So in today's class, we are going to discuss types of research. So what are the different types of research that we can do? Now before I start, let me tell you what are the things that we have done till now in this course. This is a screenshot from the document on report structure that I have already uploaded to your BUX account. Now till now, till class 7, we have done chapter 1, chapter 2, and we have discussed chapter 3, except for one topic, which is list of hypotheses. So null hypothesis, alternate hypothesis. This is something you have already done in your statistics course, right? Even then, we are going to discuss briefly how to write a hypothesis and what to do and what not to do when writing a hypothesis. But it will be discussed much later, not now. So briefly speaking, we are done with chapter 1, chapter 2, and almost everything in chapter 3. Now in today's class, we are going to discuss chapter 4. So we are going to start chapter 4, which is research methodology. And under research methodology, there are many topics, among which we are going to start with types of research today. So without further delay, let's start our discussion on types of research. So yes. As I said just now, we are going to discuss types of research, which is also known as research design in some books. And in the next class, we are going to discuss research strategies. Now, before I start, listen to this very carefully. The picture in the next slide is very important in understanding the concept of today's class. Let's say this is a picture of a mother or a woman. Usually, women in our country plays multiple roles, right? And I salute them for that, really. At the same time, they're playing the role of a mother at home, and also many of them are working outside of home in their office, and working inside their home, doing most of the household chores. So they are playing the role of a working lady, and then they're doing household chores and everything. In short, they have to play multiple roles. Now, the same person, at times, we call her a mother, at other times, we call her a professional working lady. Now, she has to play the role of a mother. At the same time, she is also somebody else's sister and somebody else's daughter. The point that I'm trying to make here is that the same person has multiple identities at the same time. So, she is a mother, she is a sister, she is a daughter, and she is a working lady. So multiple roles, right? Or multiple identities. Now, why am I saying this? Just like this picture, a single research can have multiple identities at the same time. It can have multiple classifications at the same time. Let's take a look. So we can classify a research based on nature of research question. So a research based on the nature of research question can be exploratory in nature, it can be descriptive or explanatory or evaluative. So this classification is based on what? It's based on the nature of the research question. But this is one identity of the research. The same research can be classified based on data collection method. Now, based on data collection method, how many classifications are there? We can classify the same research based on data collection method into one of these categories. So it can be either qualitative or quantitative or mixed method research. Based on what? Based on data collection method. So this is another identity of the same research. Don't worry, I'll explain all of these very soon. You don't have to understand the details about them right now. So as I was saying, this is another identification of the same research. At the same time, another identification of the research can be based on the time horizon. What are those classifications? Again, based on time horizon, the research can be classified into one of these two categories. One is cross-sectional research and the other is longitudinal research. Don't worry again, I'll explain each of them in the future very soon. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that one single research can have multiple identities based on time horizon, based on type of research question, and based on data collection method. So three different identities or classifications at the same time. 
I'll give you practical examples very soon. Don't worry. So without further delay, let's start with the first identity or first classification, which is types of research based on nature of research question. Now, as I showed earlier, based on this identity, a research can be classified into one of these four categories, exploratory research, descriptive research, explanatory research, and evaluative research. So let's discuss each of them one by one. First, what is exploratory research? Now, before I go into the formal definition and bore you with the formal definition, let me propose a scenario here. Let's say you have never been to the sea before. Now, let's say you went on a trip to the sea beach for the very first time. You went for deep sea diving. So that is the first time ever in your life where you could see the underworld of the sea. You were really, really amazed by the wonderful nature there. I mean, you could see the bottom of the ocean, right? It's really, really wonderful. Now, what's happening here? You are moving into an unexplored area, somewhere you have never been before, you have never seen before, and you have never thought of before. So you are basically exploring an unexplored area. That is the purpose of exploratory research, to explore an unexplored area. Let's move on to the formal definition now. So what does it say? This research is done when we want to explore a topic that is unexplored or very little explored. So the research is about some topic about which we do not have very good idea or very limited research is done on that topic. So we want to know more about it. So this research is often done when we have limited understanding or knowledge about a topic. Just as I said right now, the aim is to know more regarding the topic. And finally, an exploratory study is a valuable means to ask open questions to discover what is happening and gain insights about a topic of interest. So again, you want to know more about a topic which has not been explored before. Very few academics or researchers have done research on that area. Let me give you some more examples and then I guess you will be able to grab the concept even better. So some examples. Here it goes. How is the world under the sea? So as we have just seen that we haven't explored the sea very much. Now if we go under the sea and explore the unexplored areas and do a research on that, in that case, that will be considered as an exploratory research. Next example, can we live without oxygen? Now here is a very crucial note about this question. Here, I am thinking of thousand years back or 2000 years back from now, when oxygen was not discovered. Nobody knew about oxygen that much or very limited was known about this oxygen. So when oxygen was not discovered at that time, any research on oxygen was of exploratory nature. Why? Because people did not know anything about oxygen. So they were exploring that topic. Please note, today, if we do the same research on oxygen, that will not be exploratory anymore. Why? Because today, at this point in time, we know a lot about oxygen. Many research has been done on the use of oxygen and what can oxygen do and what it cannot do. So yes, thousand or two thousand years back, when we did not know anything about oxygen or very little about oxygen, at that time, this research was considered an exploratory research. But today, the same research is not exploratory anymore. All right. Let's move on to the next example. Can we develop a device that can finish our exams within just one minute, no matter how long the exam is? I know many of you are waiting for this device to come out. So again, let's assume that no research has been done on this topic. Right now, if you start doing a research on this topic and start exploring this topic, discovering the machine that you are looking for, in that case, it will be considered an exploratory research. And finally, how do Bangladeshi people survive even after having so much adulterated food? So yes, there has been no research on that as well. So if nobody has done a research on that topic, and if you do this kind of research for the very first time, 
then it might be considered as an exploratory research. So I guess now it's a bit clearer what do I mean by exploratory research. Now let's move on to the next one, which is descriptive research. Before moving on to the formal definition, let's continue with the world under the sea example. So yes, let's assume you are under the sea. Let's assume you are deep sea diving. Now, when under the sea, you are seeing a lot of things happening. There are a lot of fish swimming around. Maybe you see a wrecked ship under the sea lying around. And then you can see a lot of corals, a lot of rocks, and wonderful, colorful flowers and plants floating around, right? Then suddenly, you also observe that yes, under the sea, the water is really, really cold. Maybe it's really dark as well. No light arrives under the sea, right? So these are all the things that you observed while under the sea. You found out that yes, these are the things happening under the sea. Now, once you are done with your deep sea diving, after you come back out of the sea, if I ask you to please describe the world under the sea, then you can tell me and describe all the things that you observed. You can start telling me the things that you saw, the things that you felt, and the things that you observed. That is descriptive research. Why? Because you are describing whatever you saw, whatever you felt, and whatever you observed. Now let's move on to the formal definition. As the name implies, the major objective of descriptive research is to describe something. So again, describe what you saw, describe what you felt, and describe what you observed. Now let's move on to some examples of descriptive research. Number one. What are the different types of creatures under the sea? So yes, you saw a lot of creatures. And now I'm asking you, what are the creatures that you saw? And then you start describing. That is descriptive research. Next example. What do the creatures do under the sea? So if I ask you to do a research on what are the things that are done by different creatures under the sea? So in that research, you are going to describe all the things that you saw under the sea. So here, you are again going to describe something about the different acts of the creatures under the sea. Now let's move on to some business examples. Example number three. Who are the major consumers of Coca-Cola? So again, here, you are basically going to describe who are the people that buy majority of the Coca-Cola products. So again, you are describing something. Then number four, how are people spending their days in the lockdown or during lockdown? So after the lockdown period is over, if I ask you to do a research on the things that people did to spend time during the lockdown period, then in that research, you will be describing the things that people in general did during that lockdown period. All right. So again, you are going to describe something. Now, finally, the last example is, what happens in TARC? So if I ask you, what are the things that you did in TARC? And you describe them in your research? That is another descriptive research as well. Now, let's say there are things that happens in TARC that we don't know about, and we want to know about them. Now, in this case, we ask you to do a research on the things that happens in TARC. So basically, we are asking to describe the things that different RS batches do during their TARC times. So that is, again, also another descriptive research example. So yes, we are done with descriptive research. So in this video, we have discussed two types of research. One is descriptive and the other one is exploratory research. In the next video, we are going to discuss the remaining two types of research. One of them is explanatory research or causal research, and the other one is evaluative research. See you very soon in the next video.